Oi! G'day everybody! Welcome to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. I'm happy to be sitting right here in the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand. The island changed nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. It's freaking gorgeous down here. And it glows with a radiance, almost uh, reminiscent of Fukushima. And everybody's managed to put, snap up a part-time job as an incandescent light bulb to help the economy. Today, on the line here, I believe we have a man named uh, Roy Agner, and we're going to be talking about the Columbine Massacre. Now, I don't know if anybody else has heard this, but apparently, in Connecticut, there's a town that's been rocked by a mass shooting at an elementary school, and this has uh, come out in, uh, in, in Reuters here. Okie dokie. This is apparently one of the biggest uh, uh, killings that I've ever made. So I think it's very synchronistic. That at this particular point in time, we happen to have somebody talking about the Columbine Massacre. Unless I'm mistaken, Roy would be on the line there. Roy, Hello, uh, my name's Ron. Ron! Sorry. Yes. Oh, we just kind of pulled uh, this together in, yes, a, in about 60 seconds. I'm in the Columbine area, and uh, I'm, I'm still in shock from this latest tragedy, but as we all should understand, this tragedy indicates that... Uh, we're not done with this topic, and um, what I hope to share with you today is that we can't trust the people that are dealing with this topic. Um, in our Columbine investigation, we've learned that uh, they don't want to uh, discuss the truth that we've, we've unearthed. Um, I work with um, Donna Taylor, who I was hoping to have on the program today, but um, I guess I'll wing it on my own. We but have uh, somebody uh, call. We have somebody on the caller line here in a uh, in a two one two area code. Is that you, Donna? Oh, maybe that's. Um, we have another lady that's uh, working hard uh, on Donna's behalf. Um, Kathleen Thomas. That could be her. Uh, well, I don't know. It's a, it's a, in a two one two area code caller. You're on the air. Apparently, nobody there. Never mind. Oh. Looks like you are on your own. Well, actually, you're not. You're with me. I am having a little difficulty with you as far as volume, but uh, I'll try to... Uh, would you repeat that and then uh, say just a wee bit louder and I can hear you better? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can normally hear you. You have a very distinctive voice. I've been to your country. I just love you people there. Uh, uh, hopefully, maybe we can actually uh, go there and do uh, the filming that we plan to do about the tragedy of Mark Taylor, but let me go out, get on with it. Mark Taylor, uh, who got shot, he was the first one to get shot at Columbine, uh, ended up getting uh, persecuted over his whistleblowing. And what he was doing is it was uh, revealing the truth. Uh, number one, the, the shooter at Columbine was uh, uh, on psychotropic drugs, and at the time of Columbine, it wasn't well known that these drugs cause suicidal tendencies. And so he and um, uh, John DeCamp, an attorney who's quite famous for writing the book, The Franklin Cover-Up, uh, went to court against the pharmaceutical companies. And as a result, they have abducted Mark illegally. They just framed him and took him away and put him on the same psychotropic drugs that he was uh, going around saying that were um, quite dangerous. And another thing we learned about our investigation is why the shooter that shot Mark was on psychotropic drugs. And this um, prevented Mark from getting any protection uh, from law enforcement because this points the finger back at law enforcement when we learned that the shooter that shot Mark had been raped during an arrest. And now we have doctor, or excuse me, attorney, well, he is a doctor of law, uh, Attorney John DeCamp um, openly stating that uh, the uh, shooters were raped multiple times. So here we have two boys that were victimized through pedophilia, and they put uh, drugs in them to try to control them. Now, what concerned us was the fact that they had an opportunity to stop Columbine when they had prepared a search warrant for one of the shooters' house, for Eric Harris's house, and they didn't act on the search warrant. We found that when the boys had been raped, they were in the process of covering up the pedophilia, 
and were afraid that the truth would come out in a courtroom as to why these boys were building bombs. So you understand it's quite deep as far as their responsibility in not stopping Columbine because they uh, failed in their um, responsibility by trying to protect a pedophile police officer. And then since then, we've got the long, long story of trying to bring this forward to all of our people that we would consider responsible people in the position of trust. And, uh, well, for instance, we wouldn't be on your show talking from New Zealand tonight if these um, uh, people that were in the position of trust uh, were doing their job. In other words, they would have investigated the rape of the shooters. And our um, investigation is quite intensive. It uh, involves a forensic psychologist that has researched this, and we have a number, hundreds of people who have researched this. We've got over a million hits on our YouTubes, for instance. So if, if you have a moment, uh, grab a pencil, and I'll give you uh, two websites that you can go to and see some of our investigation and then what has happened to Mark Taylor because of his outspokenness. Um, you can go to Release Mark Taylor. Just Google that and go to his Facebook page. There's another number of articles that come up. And you could also go to Columbine Family Request. Now, the Columbine Family Request article has an interesting uh, side story or rabbit hole or whatever, where we go to a sheriff, Pat Sullivan, with our information, hoping that he'll investigate it, and then later find out that Sheriff Pat Sullivan is arrested for trading methamphetamines with homosexual prostitutes, and he admits to having sex with underage children. So this is the kind of law enforcement we're up against. Um, it goes on to another school shooting, the Flat Canyon tragedy, in which we learned that the school resource officer was getting girls pregnant. And most interestingly, this um, school resource officer, his name is Jeff Wood, ends up in the um, uh, as a, a winner of a national school safety award. So if you're interested, you can simply Google Jeff Wood, Park County. I think it's the second article that down that will uh, show you that Jeff Wood was, in fact, uh, honored with this award, even though he wasn't at the uh, campus of Platte Canyon to protect the children, and one girl got shot, and several girls got raped. So um, I'm trying to give you as much information as I can to make you realize that we've also not only uncovered the cause of the Columbine tragedy, but we've also uh, unfortunately learned that there's many, many, many people that will uh, stand uh, for protection of pedophile rapists instead of looking at uh, the rape of a child. Yeah. Uh, it's a defensive mechanism our government has put in position to protect itself. Oh, we've, um, we've uh, gone into that a lot on the show, um, there's human trafficking and um, CPS, child prostitution rings that are protected by judges and chiefs of police and things like that. They get delivered to the White House. Uh, it, it, it's it's rampant. Well, that's the uh, Franklin cover-up, the uh, White House connection when they were bringing call boys to the White House during the Papa Bush administration. And John DeCamp, uh, can I say, he he's an honorable man. He was one of the eight outstanding uh, veterans from the Vietnam War. He was honored. Um, he saved thousands of uh, uh, Vietnam orphans, uh, Operation Baby Lift. And he was like a four-term senator with uh, Nebraska. And as I say, he, uh, well, he was fortunate enough to go into some secret files. They had sealed files from the, from the families so that we never could go into these files. And they included what they called the basement tapes. Now, these were tapes that the shooters made, and they've been sealed. And also, the depositions of the shooters' parents have been sealed. And he said that his opportunity to go into those files and sealed records, um, uh, he learned through that that he uh, um, that, that the shooter, Harris, had been uh, raped multiple times. Now, our investigation didn't uh, allow us to go into those files, but we found from close, there's close to 50,000 pages that have been released 
Columbine was the largest investigation in the history of the state of Colorado. And uh, we learned just through the released files that the boys were raped on a particular date. Uh, it was what the boys called the January incident. So if you were to Google January incident, then that would uh, allow you to start understanding how serious this arrest was. It's the first thing that will come up when you, when you Google January incident. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we, we've got the information out there, but uh, mainstream media refuses to deal with the truth. And now we have uh, the theater shooting here in Colorado. Uh, and then, uh, tragically, we have this uh, horrible situation in Connecticut. You know and what, I think, getting, I think what all these things have got in common is that these shootings... Did, was Columbine High School by chance a gun, a gun ban zone as well? Was it what? Was it a gun ban zone? I'm still not understanding. Was was there a was there can, was there a gun ban? You know, were they banning guns on school grounds? Uh, all of the schools have um, no gun policies. They're it's a joke. They put up a sign uh, saying this is a gun free zone. And in fact, uh, if you're carrying a a weapon, is that you? You might shoot the sign down, but it's not going to stop you. Uh, and I'm afraid that the uh, gunmen will go to gun-free zones. I think that was a, the plan of the Columbine shooters to go to a place where no one else has a gun. So uh, yeah, we noticed that pattern throughout. And uh, interestingly, they have made Columbine one of those battlegrounds for gun rights. Uh, you remember the movie Bowling for Columbine. Mark yeah. Taylor was in that movie, uh, the, the young man that's been abducted and drugged. He, he's been in that movie, uh, and he was quite uh, strong about um, having our Second Amendment rights. And in this case, uh, Michael Moore twisted it around to make it look like he was uh, wanting to uh, ban guns. and So it's amazing how they twisted it all around. Well, um, it's not the guns that are killing people, it's the people behind the guns. Well, and I'm afraid what we're noticing here is what Mark was pri trying to bring to our attention. I believe most of them are being affected with uh, prescription drugs. Mm. So I think it's, we should concern ourselves with the uh, suicidal tendencies that um, Mark was talking about when he sued the Solvay Pharmaceutical Company. Mm. There's a lot of different um, side effects that are also, you know, homicidal, suicidal tendencies. Essentially, you, you kind of lose total touch with reality. You, you kind of feel like what you're looking at and what you're doing isn't real anymore. And yeah, horrible they, they things ensue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a passion for other people either. You know? Yeah. It, it just shuts down that part of the brain. It's like an empathy uptake inhibitor. Right. That's it. So, uh, in a nutshell, we've learned that all these people that are uh, investigating school shootings will only go so far. And until they investigate the rape of the shooters at Columbine and the facts that the two boys... Now, see, they had learned how to handle, how to play with their drugs. They're smart boys. And they learned that, the, um, uh, that if you take a lot of them all at once and then you come off of them, that it would create a lot of rage. And they actually used that as a weapon. So Mark Taylor was saying that uh, these drugs should be considered uh, uh, accessory to murder. They're practically, they they're practically yeah, yeah. loaded weapons. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and even in the theater shooting, uh, the only lawsuit that's come forward so far has been against the theater itself, apparently, for not keeping the security. Um, we know that the uh, shooter must have been on the same sex drugs because the uh, psychiatrist that was treating him had already been in trouble in um, Texas for having um, prescribed these drugs to herself and to family members. So she was a proponent of these drugs. So I'm, we're, we're believing, even though we don't have it out yet, that he was uh, being affected by the same drugs or the same family of drugs that uh, the shooter that shot uh, Mark was on. And in fact, now the, the drugs that Mark is on. That is such a horrible story in itself to see this poor family. All Donna Taylor did was bring her uh, son to school one day. He was one of the first ones shot. 
and immediately they tried to uh, silence him. He had witnessed, um, while he was laying in the grass bleeding to death, uh, fortunately they got him just before he died, uh, he noticed that there was a shooter on the roof. And um, the authorities came in in the name of uh, Chief Investigator Gary Kleinman, threatened Mark that if he said anything, uh, that there'd be people uh, that he should fear. And in fact, uh, he didn't put any of that in Mark's report. Later on, we found helicopter footage where we found the SWAT team on the roof. And they've never explained why this SWAT team was up there that was never identified or never acknowledged. Hey, Ron. Yes. Well, this is really interesting, and I want to talk more about this after after the break as well. Why would a SWAT team already be there on the roof? Isn't it? Isn't that interesting? Well, and, and and even if they were on the roof, why weren't they saving people? Why weren't they going in with this with their SWAT business and and and, and taking out the shooters? Let's find out. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on American Freedom Radio. My very special guest, Ron Agner. And we also have the ColumbineFamilyRequest.org. That's ColumbineFamilyRequest.org. Ron, welcome back. Thank you. Now, we were talking about the SWAT teams on the roof. And we become familiar with things like uh, inside jobs, false flags and the various legislations that come out after various events to take people's guns, surveil them, put uh, expensive uh, scanning equipment in schools, treat the children like slaves, things like that. Is any of that ringing a bell in regards to Columbine for you? All, all of the above. Uh, they use that as the calling card for all of this, particularly the bullying uh, issue. Now, we have a, um, a story as to how this was spun. If you like to hear about COINTELPRO and spin doctors and such, uh, go to a website called Hugging the Spotlight by Jessica Siegel and read, uh, it's down about halfway where it says Media City, and you'll see how they spun the story about being uh, like a gang story between two uh, factions, the Trenchcoat Mafia and the Jocks. And you'll learn that Michael Smith didn't even go to Columbine High School, but yet they they ran with that story. You understand? Yes. Uh, and this is all still up on the Internet. So most of this stuff, uh, you know, like I'm explaining here, this these articles were written like 13 years ago. So uh, go back to that article and read where Michael Smith spun the story to make it sound like this was an internal... Columbine school tragedy, but they would never let that story outside the schoolyard, even though uh, one of the shooters had a bumper sticker on his car that says, I hate this town. So, if, you know, that one bumper sticker uh, indicates there was something serious. Now, let me explain to you what we know about wh or why we suspicioned this arrest as being the um, uh, impetus for the uh, tragedy. Um, we found a written motive. And it's uh, well documented. Um, it was in the yearbook uh, prior to the tragedy uh, where Dylan, one of the shooters, is writing to Eric. And he says, we'll be killing cops, blowing up things. It'll be a holy April morning of natural born killers. And then he goes, this is very important. You know, they called their arrest the January incident. In this case, they mentioned the January incident as being the reason. Because he goes on to say, my wrath for January's incident will be godlike not to mention our revenge in the commons. Well, the commons was a school lunchroom where they placed the bomb. So it was, it was actually meant to be a bombing. And when you go to back to that word wrath, um, Dylan was wearing the word wrath on his T-shirt during the day of uh, the tragedy. So uh, it's not that hard to uh, start understanding this. So then, okay, the January incident becomes of a concern because they've mentioned this as being the reason that they have wrath, and you find a picture. Uh, Harris drew a picture uh, while he was under arrest, and then he cleverly put some foreground over it so you couldn't readily see what was in the picture. And we've uh, on our website, we've taken away the foreground so you can see that there were two stick figures 
uh, one of them on all fours and the other one in a sodomizing position with a star on his chest. So obviously that raised our suspicion as to, well, what does that picture mean? And now we've got um, actually on our website, you can see where Harris uh, is being taunted by a couple of the, his classmates. Uh, and then his response is, no, I don't think so. He's being accused of having uh, anal sex. And he says, no, I don't think so, instead of denying it. If you're real careful, you can actually hear one of his other friends say, no, I wouldn't go there. So all of the little pieces that we have, all circumstantial, but all lining up. And then to have the uh, support of John DeCamp uh, when he says that it was as simple as going to the sealed documents. So what we need now, I guess, is to get those documents released. Uh, I don't see where they have a right to withhold documents that uh, suspicion them of uh, uh, provoking these two shooters into shooting uh, the kids at Columbine. Uh, to, to look at it from another perspective, this is a, a very easy way to look at it. This story about it being about jocks does not, according to Kate the Tanner, lead investigator, she says it does not pass the smell test. In fact, if these two boys were gunning for jocks, they would not have gone to the library. That's the least place that you would find jocks. You'd go to the locker room or the playing field or the gymnasium. Anywhere but the uh, library. You understand? So, Doesn't make sense. Um, Who were the real it, targets? Bill Ritter, the, the governor of Colorado, came out and supported this spin. So then it became the official spin. And all of these people, including the governor and particularly Ken Salazar, who was the attorney general during the Columbine tragedy. Now he's the interior secretary were all involved in the cover-up with Attorney General Salazar being the kingpin of the cover-up. What is he doing in the White House? All I'm telling you is this can expose a lot of people, including President Clinton, who we had an opportunity to go speak with uh, during a... Well, he was here to raise money for a memorial, and we were at this $250 plate dinner, and it was at the Adams Mark Hotel here in Denver, and we're in a private meeting with him and Donna Taylor takes me there and he puts me in her or in um, uh, Clinton's face and says tell him what you know and I told him that we had learned about this stuff so uh, they all want to protect the pedophile rapists that caused the uh, tragedy uh, obviously for political reasons uh, but we're we're here to protect the children you understand we don't we don't go along with their program of protecting pedophile rapists we we tend to think that the children are more important, and until they take this seriously and responsibly and investigate the rape that uh, caused the Columbine tragedy, I would guess that most uh, parents shouldn't trust them either. Who is who is the person alleged to have raped the boys? Uh, it was a Sheriff Walsh. There's actually a file in a uh, El Paso County uh, that actually names him. The, the name of the uh, file is named Walsh but rape dot text and that in that file is the picture that Harris drew that's the picture that we gave to um, uh, Sheriff Pat Sullivan who was uh, involved in the uh, pedophilia so you understand we we don't have anybody to give our information to that isn't a pedophile here you know what uh, so are, also, are these by chance of these two the, these two guys are they the uh how many rapists are we talking about? How many what? How many rapists, pedophile cops are we talking about here? Just the one or two? Well, actually, it, it, it hooks up with another one. that It's a sideline to Columbine, but here's a boy that was hung to death in his basement. His, his name was Robert Latin, and his father discovered that uh, he had an association with an Arapahoe County deputy that uh, was later convicted of pedophilia. So all of these are uh, considered suicides, but we don't think so. Uh, this goes on to where we learned about child trafficking, and it happened to be a uh, lovely young lady by the name of Judy Chase. She spells it J-U-D-I, Chase, and she happens to be from New Zealand. She came to Colorado to raise orphan children, and her husband 
was murdered by Satanists when they learned of a child trafficking ring. So here's one of your lovely uh, New Zealanders who come here for a beautiful life, and instead it turned tragic when she came here to Colorado to raise orphan children. So she has a website, Judy Chase's Amber Alert, and you can read about what she learned about the uh, horrible conditions that children live under here in Colorado. Uh, she ties in with Ted Gunderson, who was an FBI uh, director, head of the FBI office in L.A., who during re his retirement was helping people and helped uh, Judy Chase in trying to discover uh, who murdered her um, husband. We know the, the man's name. As a matter of fact, he has a nickname in the town of Evergreen, Colorado. His name is Murdering Matt. And in this case, uh, that's how well he's known to be the murderer of uh, Judy's husband. Uh, she learned the name of the child trafficking rings it, the, by the name of the Fat Cats, is what they called themselves. And then uh, learned that the uh, John Benet Ramsey case has that mentioned in the ransom note, uh, mentioning that uh, the father of John Benet wasn't the only fat cat in town to that effect. I know that's a common term, but in this case, it, it's kind of close. We're right next door to the county where that happened. Um, we also have a, just recently, I'm talking within the last week, we learned, and we learned this because Donna was wanting to get on a Christian talk show uh, to talk about her son's predicament being abducted and drugged against his will. And we attempted to talk to uh, Bob Inyart, who has KGov, which is a, a real right-wing Christian talk show. And in investigating Enyart, we have people out there claiming that he's a Satanist who was involved in the murder and dismemberment of a girl named Jessica Ridgeway, who happened to live in his neighborhood. So all of these pieces are, you know, it, it confuses me. So a few people are think, having a hard time following okay. me. Well, let me, let, me, let me see if I can... Uh, elucidate here there's a global pedophile network it's not just in the united states it's not just in the uk and the in the united states some um, you remember how uh, there used to be like uh nope. ch pictures of pictures of uh, children on the backs of milk cartons everywhere and and now suddenly there's very few it's because so many children have gone missing they can't fit them on the back of the things anymore so uh, allegedly something like four hundred thousand kids a year go missing um, and never, never seen again. In the United Kingdom, um, I think it's uh, close to 100,000. I don't know what the uh, statistics are for New Zealand, but DynCorp has also been um, uh, exposed for uh, human trafficking in large quantities of, of uh, people in the sex slavery business and that kind of thing. And a lot of the uh, child protection services that you'd see in the United States are, are you're something like five times more likely to be sexually abused in child protective services custody than, any, than uh, in your own family home. So it's essentially just a front that all these organizations that come in are simply there to do the direct opposite of what their job actually entails. So if he's a law enforcement official, his uh, job is actually to make sure the law is not enforced. If he's a, uh, a judge, the uh, make sure that the uh, the criminal always gets away, so on and so forth. And it's tied in with almost every sector of society. Psychopaths are, are, are really running the show at the end of the day. And every now and again, one of these well-meaning people who thinks he's actually in a service to save people's lives and save people's kids realizes that he's surrounded by a bunch of sociopathic, psychopathic, criminal, mastermind, sons of uh, 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 whatever expletive you can really conceive of. He starts to try and go public and then all of a sudden he finds out uh, just how dangerous these people really are to the people who try to expose them. They grab you, they torture you, they rape you, they drug you, they uh, lock you away in, in prison, you know, all, all completely without due process or, or anything that you'd ever conceive of. It's a perfect circle that they've got going on here. But now... Globally, people are starting to realize that this perfect circle is there and they're trying to expose it, but it's really, really difficult. Is that about right? Uh, one other thing that you ought to mention is the fact that it takes a lot of money to be dealing in such an expensive little hobby. So, oh, like that's resources, right. you know? Huge amounts. Yeah, so it's the elite, the, the elite that are flying these kids around in their jets, okay? 
And uh, we uncovered a, a child trafficking ring up in Butte, Montana, where the plane crashed. Thirteen beautiful kids crashed, got killed. And they, they were uh, being trafficked to the Yellowstone Club, which is a billionaire's club. So believe me, uh, it's not just about your money. It's um, truly, I believe, that what we were sharing with you here uh, lets uh, people know that it's not about pillage. It's about rape and pillage. And this ought to upset them as much as... Uh, what they're doing to our children's future financially. And you, I doubt that the United States population is remarkably aware of the dangers of psychotropic drugs on this as well. There was an incident in New Zealand not too long ago. A man named Clayton Weatherston stabbed his very beautiful girlfriend, Sophie Elliott, 217 times with a pair of scissors. On the day he did that, he tripled his dose of Prozac. And that was never really uh, uh, reported in any great fashion, and, and, and people don't understand. Because if you're trying to expose something like that, that involves both the multi-bazillion dollar uh, child pedophile rape uh, and pillage programs that we're elucidating here today, you're also dealing with the multi-billion dollar per year pharmaceutical industry, which is uh, accountable for untold death and uh, suffering and, and whatnot, and very few successes. So these people will act very, very aggressively to protect their interests. And I was wondering, exactly what kind of methods have they employed to cover this up, uh, particularly in Mark Taylor's case, or maybe you yourself have uh, some experiences of uh, threats or intimidation, things of that nature? Uh, well, you can just go to Mark Taylor's website, release Mark Taylor. Uh, Facebook, and you can see physically what they've done to the boy. We've got his before and after uh, of what he was doing and now what he looks like. All right. uh, and then personally... Oh, hold on, Ron, we're coming to break here, mate. We'll be right back in uh, just a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, with Ron Agner. Release Mark Taylor on Facebook and Columbine Family Request Dog Dog. Welcome back to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com five days a week. That's 3 till 5 p.m. Pacific, 4 till 6 Mountain Time, 5 till 7 Central, and 6 till 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you happen to be in the Southern Hemisphere in New Zealand, midday till 2 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturdays, which is what it is today uh, for me. Anyway... A very special guest is Ron Agnar, and we are just kind of talking about this this whole Columbine tragedy. And have you ever noticed, as a conspiracy theorist, and by conspiracy theorist I mean a person who's not naive enough to uh, refuse to believe that there's powerful people who actually use their power and influence to grow or maintain said power and influence. That's what a conspiracy theorist is at the end of the day, as far as my reckoning. You understand that there are connections to really big incidents. Seems like almost anything that's been massively hyped up in the mainstream media, there's something behind it, invariably. And so what was the uh, benefits that people got out of this? I was wondering about this. When these people stage an incident, or spin an incident that happened on its own, they usually get something out of it, or use that incident to cover up something really bad that they've done. I wonder, and is that uh, true in relation to Columbine? Like, what did they get out of it, or uh, what did they do that they covered up? We understand that they covered up the uh, the pedophilia and, uh, and and the abuse and that kind of thing, but that was the only thing that they gained out of it? Because Rahm Emanuel says never, never waste a a, a a tragedy. Ron, are you there? Apparently, we've lost him. Okie dokie then. AFR, if you could please try and uh, reconnect him. <coughs> Ron, are you there? Apparently not. Okie pokey. Well, let me see. Let's go over what we've just learned here today. That there is a strange little buzzing and clicking sound on the line there. Ron, is that you by chance reconnected? Well, I was trying to talk to you a second ago. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Oh, good. Okay. Well, in that case, bugger recapping. Let's just keep going. 
Did we were you able to hear what I was saying before? Yeah, but very is very difficult. But I am I'm being able to understand the conversation. Okay, okay, kind of like uh, speaking South African. Can I? I believe. I'm uh, sorry. Can I ask you uh, exactly what did the uh, New World Order globalist billionaire club gain from this incident? What kind of legislation got passed after um, Columbine with it as a justification? What kind of uh, what kind of things were implemented, to your knowledge? Oh, they had a huge uh, uh, program of uh, the school bullying issues. Uh, and you have to understand that it was the same Secret Service who was here to do profiles of the shooters that couldn't get it right. You know, they couldn't go from the written motive to the picture and realize that there needed to be an investigation because that's what provoked the shooters. They, they couldn't do that. They just didn't understand it somehow. But anyway, in this case, they went on to tie on with the Department of Education, and they're the ones that are responsible for the safe school initiatives. What are, what are those? Look, what are those initiatives? What what do they? What does that mean? Well, that's all about what causes school shootings, studying of school shootings, uh, how to report school shootings, and from what we've learned from the inside, we've reported the rape of those two shooters to just about every institution there is, and they will not act upon our information. It's most unusual that all these people that are advocates for the children are not being responsible enough to look at the picture that Harris drew and call and have some very conscious thought about what that might mean. And instead, they uh, refuse to protect the child in the picture. And uh, we look at it as like a Rorschach test. They always identify themselves with the person with the badge on. So until we can find somebody in our government that likes to protect children, then we won't get an investigation of the rape that caused the two shooters to take revenge. Mm. Well, it's like a big so house. Of, it, it, I'm, I'm, can I just ask you? Ask you. I don't know. I don't know um, if if you kind of answer what this because I was thinking about um, this and what I would do if I was a psychopath who was in control of the government. And I saw an incident like this happen. First thing, I'd just protect my boys. And secondly, I'd try to put, um, I don't know, my mates in the military industrial complex in with big contracts in schools so that they can thumbprint and face scan everybody or or uh, have metal detectors and, and basically turn the schools into uh, more of a prison to train the next uh, generation just to keep them safe from those those um, those very very scary uh, uh, people that wouldn't even be able to really get off a couple of rounds if the principal was allowed to uh, have a gun closet in his office uh, for, for example for just such a case in fact there have been many, many school shootings that haven't been uh, very widely reported at all because the school shooter got shot before even killing anybody. That's why these people go on the, onto, onto the gun ban zones, as, as we uh, as we mentioned before. And I think that's probably what, what I would do if I was a, a ruthless criminal gun banning uh, um, psychopath that's planning to commit genocide or enslavement on a, on a, on a race of people like the United States. I'd, I'd, I'd use any incident I could to get their guns away from them. Oh, look, one person with, with a gun. I'm not going to elucidate as to why they actually went out and, and, uh, and, and shot people. I'm not going to talk about the drugs. I'm not going to talk about the pedophilia. But I am going to say everybody just needs to realise that guns are bad, even though if the people in that school were armed, they would have actually had some means of defending themselves it wouldn't have just been lambs to the slaughter and goodness knows what else the authorities were actually playing a part in that in that day as well i mean were the swat team shooting people too were they preventing people from escaping did they close all the doors and, and, and things like that and surround the school to ensure that the death count would go up higher ron well even even today they're using the um shooters at the uh, theater uh, as being a reason to talk about the gun issue. Uh, Governor uh, Hickenlooper uh, has called upon the uh, uh, legislature to deal with the gun issue. Uh, and what we know about Hickenlooper 
when we were bringing this forward, our information about the shooters at Columbine being raped, we actually had a free Mark Taylor website. And when Hickenlooper's people uh, discovered we had the web website, they threatened Mark Taylor's attorney, and we had to take it down. So you can understand they, there's certain issues they'll deal with, and then some they won't. And uh, in this case, we were exposing that uh, Pat Sullivan, the sheriff, uh, hadn't acted upon our request to have the uh, Columbine tragedy investigated with our information that when we discovered that there was a rape involved. So um, I'm just saying that it's such a thick web of deceit that you can't get through it. We've even been to Mike Kaufman's office, which is Mark's um, uh, congressman. And uh, we were in there twice. We brought Mark in once. Uh, told them everything, like I'm telling you on this show tonight. Um, and then also we went to uh, uh, Senator Mike Bennett and told him, uh, how many people are we going to have to tell before we end up with somebody who says, you know what, let's take some responsibility here and let's look into that rape of the uh, shooter at Columbine during the arrest. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It truly is. Uh, we can't trust these people. They've got the um, court case all sealed up in the theater shooting to where they're, tr they're trying to protect the uh, uh, University of Colorado, if you can see that one. Yeah, well, it sounds exactly the same way how the Princess Diana inquest was sort of covered. Instead of being covered by legal reporters, they had the royal correspondence and things of that nature that would never criticise the royals who were at the centre of the investigation at the royal court of inquiry. <laughs> you know, the fox garden, the hen house doesn't even come close. This is the Nazi... Uh, you know what, uh, this, is, this is way off my field, but I've always suspicioned that Princess Diana might have been seeing things when she was going in to investigate uh, minefields. Remember, she was interested in the aftermaths of the war. Oh, yeah. And in that case, maybe she saw a lot of little children that were uh, obviously uh, not of the same race uh, because of the uh, U.S. military being there, their presence. Mm, mm. You understand, yeah. Um, and a lot of times, uh, these people that go into war simply do it because it's uh, an unlawful area where they can have their way with people. Yeah, unfortunately, and have and they they weigh with the drug production fields. Exactly, you got it. So uh, I apologize for the rest. You know, I'm sure we've got an international audience here. I haven't spoke to internationally, but I apologize for everything our government's doing. And I'm hoping someday we can wake up the American people to get it straightened out, and maybe uh, we can be forgiven for what's been going on. Well, you're not the you're not the only one who's who's fighting these kind of uh, battles here, Ron. You know, I mean, I mean, you know that yourself because you've got a, a whole group of uh, of uh, supportive uh, people around you. As soon as you come out telling the truth, that's what happens. You get a bunch of supportive people that see you all of a, all of a sudden and come out to help you, and a bunch of scumbaggery individuals who see you and come after you. So. It's a little bit of a balancing act either way, but we'll keep fighting on just as long as we need to in order to get the truth out. It's just that simple. Ron Eigner is my guest, columbinefamilyrequest.org, and uh, if, you're, if you're keen to do another hour, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Ron, hold on the line there. And we're going to take some callers, 218-339-8525. Back in a sec. Welcome to hour number two. Of the fastest two hours in talk radio, it's the Vinnie Eastwood show, the lighter side of genocide. Because in a world so full of chaos and madness and scumbaggery, if you lose your sense of humour, you'll go friggin' nuts. My very special guest, Ron Eigner from ColumbineFamilyRequest.org. Welcome back. Can we also um, uh, expand here? Is there anything that you kind of hold back on saying because it's just just too too nuts or whatever, or is this just about as nuts as it gets and it's uh, it's almost as much as you can handle with re with relation to this? I mean, if there's ever a time when you kind of hold your tongue about something just because it doesn't come up in the conversation, or, or maybe if you're talking on radio or TV, people might think you're a little crazy for saying so, or are you just all uh, balls to the wall? 
I'm having difficulty hearing, but I'll see what I can do with it. <laughs> um, you know, when it comes to what my opinion is, can I say I'm only voicing what, what Mark was stating before they abducted and drugged him. Uh, in, in this case, the truth, uh, when it's politically incorrect, uh, they want to attack the um, uh, messenger. And in this case, I guess I have proof that I'm the messenger because I've been attacked physically. Um, when I was uh, learning about the uh, Black Canyon tragedy, I had a couple sheriff's deputies attack me from behind and uh, injure my back. So I know I'm, <laughs> I guess I know that I'm doing the right thing when the enemy must think that I'm important enough to attack physically. And I've had over 50 different episodes of uh, police harassment, at, uh, not only police, but with, uh, I guess you'd say, the Agenda 21 crowd, planning and zoning and those kind of people because of my business uh, experience. But um, to go on, uh, that's not what this is about. I'd rather uh, kind of share with you what concerns me about um, uh, what Mark was saying, particularly about the uh, psychotropic drugs. I believe that all those people in that theater would have gone home that night if they hadn't been uh, drugging that uh, red-headed killer. So uh, please believe me, I, uh, I, I find that the whole judicial system in that county, from Sheriff Pat Sullivan all the way up to the um, judge, Sylvester. Now let me explain to you while I'm explaining this. Um Sullivan obviously uh, got off with 18 days for what he did, not only to the uh, people that were directly involved in the sting operation that he was busted, but it goes on to where he was also involved in covering up the Columbine tragedy, which he was never even charged with. Uh, Sullivan um, ends up being protected by Southers, who was the... Uh, U.S. attorney during Columbine, which is now the attorney general. And he knows all about the Columbine situation because Donna has informed him of her information. Uh, he takes over the Sullivan case, okay? We've checked with his office, and yes, they did take our interview seriously when we met with him and told him that we had contacted Sullivan the second time. So it, it's almost like revolving doors, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. We we have made every attempt we can to report the rape of the shooters that shot Mark. And at every opportunity, they refused to hear us. And in the case of Arapahoe County, uh, it's the same judge, Sylvester, who heard the Pat Sullivan case, gave him 18 days. The shooter would have been in a detention center, the red-headed guy, Holmes, he would have been in the um, detention center named after Sullivan. It was the uh, Sheriff Pat Sullivan Detention Center, okay? And they just took his name off of it. Uh, Pat Sullivan was so well-respected, they named his detention center after him. It uh, goes on to where the judge that is hearing the only case that we hear that has come up against the theater is being heard by a Judge Babcock, who is explicit in the Columbine cover-up. I mean, he was the one that wouldn't release the basement tapes, and then they ended up being sealed. So that all, sounds of the, like... all, the players that, all the players that we are seeing here is almost a repeat with almost the same players. Mm. That and, sounds, sounds like Babcock uh, to me. It, here in Colorado, it just kind of piqued interest because there was an editorial just a few days ago, and the name of the, the headline of the editorial is 13 years on, still wondering why. Well, you know, here Donna and Mark are up, jumping up and down saying, hey, over here, this is what happened. Now, now that we've had a, our little talk tonight, do you understand why now? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this editorial shows up, in the, and then they go on down in that article it says, uh, that is why we're so dismayed that in 2007, when a federal judge ordered the depositions from the parents of the killers to be sealed for 20 years, those depositions took place in 2003 in connection with a lawsuit filed by families 
of some of the victims. It's possible the documents would shed substantial light on how Harris and Klebold came to become the Columbine killers. And can you tell me, uh, when they're hanging on every word of the shooter's mother and will not listen to the victim's mother, Donna Taylor, something's very wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, where's the article that Donna's explaining why? Mm. So I'm just telling you, they don't want to see it. Uh, we can't get an attorney that will represent uh, Mark and Donna. They're they're fighting to the whole thing. How many ways? I've I've seen it like a kind of a, a spider web, but it's almost as if they make a a little attachment for that spider. Every single where place that you would go for help, if you go to the cops for help because you, your child has been kidnapped, the cops on the take. Right. He prevents, yeah, you, he prevents you, you, an investigation. And if you think that cop is dirty, so you go to internal affairs to expose him, that cop who's taken your report on the dirty cop is also on the take. So he prevents your investigation. And then you think to myself, oh, well, they, these, uh, these police aren't, aren't, aren't very good at all. I'll go get a lawyer. And the lawyer's on the take. And you're like, well, this, this lawyer's corrupt. I'll, I'll go to the judge. And the judge is on the take. And then you go, oh, well, the, the judge is corrupt. I'll go to the governor. And the governor's on the take. And then you go, oh, well, frack the governor. I'll go to my congressman. And the congressman's on the take. <laughs> and it just goes on and on and on. Let's go to the FBI. They're on the take. Let's go to the CIA. They're on the take. Well, then you go to the NSA. They're on the take. <laughs> it's impossible. It's like everything we've been taught to believe about the country. That we're fair, that we're just, that we want the truth is a lie. And all of these apparatus that we've been told are there to investigate and to punish the wicked and, and safeguard the innocent are there to do the direct opposite. And it's only once you start asking the wrong questions of each and every one of these agencies and you see that they're all the same and they're not there to serve your interests at all. Although you do pay for them to do so. You've got it right. Uh, and I'll tell you, you can do this on your uh, radio show. Just call these people and tell them, you know the rape of the Columbine shooter and you want to report that rape and find out what you get. That's all you got to do. Do what we've been doing for 13 years. You'll get the runaround. You know, I've got better things to do with and my time. <laughs> You know, we've got to get this out to the people who actually do want to listen, because when these people start to realize that there is a public awareness going on, because the only reason why these people get away with it is because they're scuttling away into the shadows. If you leave no rock to hide under, if you shine the light on them wherever they go, eventually we'll get them um, out of those positions and into a nice, fabulously uh, adorned, jail somewhere on an island with uh, lions, tigers and bears for them to play with. So at the moment, it's not knowing just how corrupt they are or the things that they're doing. The key here is attempting to wake up people who will in fact um, help, will we'll do something about this. I, I think that there must be, there must be people within the establishment who are willing to lay down their lives in order to expose incidents like this, to take it through to an arrest, because we all know that there's many investigations, we all know that there's many words spoken, but you very rarely see these incredibly disgusting, horrific people who have all the wealth and power in the world doing the perp walk. Do you? When was the last time you saw David Rockefeller in handcuffs? You know? That kind of thing just doesn't happen. It's because they own the cops. <laughs> there has to be some kind of uh, citizen-initiated uprising and reform of some kind in order to change the entire system because there's not just a few little bad apples. It's a bad barrel, which we're sending our good apples into to get rotten. Ron, how do you? I'm just. 
how do you how do you sleep? Right? Do you, do you do you lie tossing and turning most nights? Heaps of thoughts going through your head. You say, "How do I sleep?" That was all I got out of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't. You know, I sleep comfortably knowing that God would have me do and be in the position I'm in because I know that it's the children that can't talk for themselves. Okay. Yeah. But in this case, I don't sleep well because I know that the the evil that I've uncovered. I'll tell you, man. Every time I seem to go down one of these rabbit holes, it goes right to Satanism. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me explain just recently about the Jessica Ridgeway case. Okay, so the little girl ends up missing, and then they have a big search, and they find her body chopped up in little pieces. And so then this kid uh, is exposed. His mother says he was bringing the pieces home to his house or something. Well, then this woman is jumping all over this, saying that she knows of a cult that's actually being covered up by a very... Um, uh, I mean, you can check it out yourself. Type into your computer, um, Jessica Ridgeway, Bob Enyart, and you'll see where she's trying to expose this guy who's a Satanist. Now, I don't know. All of these pieces are fitting together in a most horrible way, but I have to see it as a puzzle that's coming together rather rapidly here. And um, it ties the John A. Ramsey case, if you remember that one, into the whole picture. Uh, the Judy Chase case uh, where they were raped, uh, transporting children. I got into that to the point where Ted Gunderson was saying they were shipping him out of Denver by the uh, airliner full, uh, going to remote places in Nebraska, or excuse me, in um, Nevada, where they were exchanging them and putting them on private planes after an auction. Uh, most horrible stories. But I, I just simply... Uh, initially tried to figure out, well, how come these two boys committed this horrendous act at Columbine High School, and this is where it's led. Mm. And uh, then we have the Christians that think there's no battle going on. So I'm having a hard time dealing with being in uh, association with people that are just all about feeling good. Mm. And I guess that shows a little angry, or anger, because we've been messed around with by the likes of Ted Haggard, people like that, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm not familiar with, with that person. Well, yeah, Ted Haggard was uh, the head of a huge assembly down in Colorado Springs, and Mark and Donna thought maybe they would find good spiritual fellowship there. Turns out that uh, he gets involved in, what was it, uh, he was exchanging, he was having sex with his um, masseuse and was buying methamphetamines from him. And then later on, it wasn't uh, as well uh, reported, but he was also having sex with some young kid in the church, okay? Mm. So what I'm telling you is, after you've been in a congregation like that, it becomes such a horrible thing, uh, you feel really let down by the church. Um, I'm talking about like the Catholics do, I would assume. Mm. Mm. Uh, But in the case of the... uh, that church, it ties in with another shooting in which the uh, uh, gunman first goes to a um, missionary in Arvada, kills several people there, then goes home on his computer, he types some things in that the Columbine killer has written, and then he goes down to this church uh, in Colorado Springs and shoots two people in the parking lot, and they gun him down in the sanctuary. So what I'm telling you is all these little pieces come together. In that case, the kid was uh, being, uh, was he was complaining that he was in a pedophilic church, okay? Mm. And then uh, he links to, uh, he had a link on his website to another kid. Uh, this case, guy was Ricky Rodriguez. I think that's still up. So if you, if you just typed into your search engine, Ricky Rodriguez, You'll see where that's a young man who committed suicide because he was being mistreated by a pedophilic church. So, so much of this is dealing with uh, sexual, uh, and nobody seems to want to discuss it. Oh. And also, the satanic part of it is... You know what's to- incident? You, know, you know what's interesting about this, Ron, is just yesterday I had a pastor on the show talking about how so many Christians don't even read the Bible 
and don't even fight evil, which is what they're supposed to be doing. And the day before that, um, I think we were um, talking about something else related to this, uh, about how you can't actually get anything done or get any rewards in a grand scheme of things without huge quantities of suffering, strife, and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, fighting. Really, everything goes up and down and, and, and round and round. People die in order to get good things done. They don't sit back and watch good things get done, you know? You people have got to get involved. But I simply thought that if you got to the bottom of things and you expose the truth, that people would appreciate the fact that the truth is known so that we know how to protect ourselves from those that will harm our children. And in this case, uh, I find that they don't want to know. They just don't want to know. It's too horrifying. Uh, in, fact, in that, they are truly endangering their children because... All questions need to be asked when it comes to our children. We don't stop it because a guy has a badge on. We don't look at it. Ron, thank you very much, man. This is good. And we're going to be talking for the remainder of the hour. 218-339-8525 is the number to call in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Oi! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I'm feeling kind of really... uh... You know how you get really exhausted towards the end of the year Ron how you look back on on the year that was and not all the time is it all the good memories of the year that was that flood back to you and you think you know I should have done I should have done something better or I wish that didn't happen to me <laughs> like Christmas becomes a time of regret and and renewal kind of like a solstice or an equinox I wonder can we as a people, regardless of what country you're living in or, or language you speak, get these pedophile, psychopath scum out of powerful positions that prevent themselves from ever getting caught. How could we do that? I mean, it'd have to be some kind of a military might or... or or if it's not a military precise operation to to get these people like in a in a in a staged Bin Laden sense of the word, it would have to be mass revolt, mass non-compliance, people's massive gates to their mansions being broken down, and these people being dragged through the streets and having cabbages and and cans of beer thrown at them. I I don't know. Can there be a peaceful resolution to this? Or is the establishment so corrupted that there really isn't going to be any other option when it comes down to it? They're going to fire first. In fact, they've already fired many shots. But it may get into a hot war at some point. Because it's the whole country of the United States and the whole planet. And it's the various eclectic countries that are on the line here. If you really think about the connections with the Columbine Massacre and everything else that's really going on in the United States today. Is it even possible to get rid of them, Ron? Sometimes you feel, I feel hopeless. Like I'm fighting a losing battle here. And just doing it because it's the right thing. Ron, are you there? Seem to have had some kind of disconnection here. Unfortunately. AFR, if you could... Well, no. Oh, uh, there we oh, are. There we are. I now can I'm sorry. Hear you. I'm, I'm, You're live. Am I still live on this? Oh, yeah. Okay. I apologize. I just wanted to share one last part of our um, knowledge that I hope to impart on everyone uh, towards the end of the show so that you can think about this. Now, this actually happened, and it's not the most horrible tragedy, but understand that it was only stopped because it was stopped just before it happened, but on the second anniversary of the 13th, I mean the second, two days, I'll get this out, two days before the 13th anniversary, we had a 13-year-old boy 
right across the street from the cemetery where we buried some of the Columbine kids at Isaac Newton Middle School had prepared a bomb to put under the jock's table to blow the school up. So realize Columbine was supposed to be about a bomb. And in this case, this boy was following as a copycat to the Columbine tragedy, was going to blow the cafeteria up because he was angry at the jocks. So you understand where that young man was misled. has nothing to do with being angry at the jocks. It has to do with two boys who were raped on a January night. So you understand that children will kill children over what they have been led to believe the Columbine tragedy was about. You have created a huge fan base. Everyone in high school gets pushed and shoved. And when you use that as the motive for a tra tragedy as Columbine, you've lowered the bar to that type of conduct. And in fact, um, we have a lot of kids today that seem to think that these two pillars of Columbine have reached some kind of a godlike status. I'm afraid that if we don't get this straightened out, my uh, worst, uh, uh, can I say, the nightmare that I expect to happen if we don't is going to happen. And they'll consider this 20 beautiful children that we lost today as being small compared to what's going to happen when a bomb goes off in a lunchroom. So believe me, it's very important, please. And as long as we have Columbine copycats, we have to deal with this. And thank you for the, just let me share that with you, because that's how important this is. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And you know what's interesting is that you have to be a perennial student. At all times, you've got to be learning about these, these things that go on. You have to somehow cope with it, though. How do you cope with it? Not well. <laughs> no, I have to say, I, I don't like carrying this kind of information on my shoulders, and I wish everybody else would do something with it. Um, in fact, I could see where it could actually change things. Just the knowledge that we have as to the people that we've gone to with this, you understand. Mm. Having never found one person responsible enough now, can I say, we, we run into people all the time that aren't in the system. Like we have forensic psychologist agrees with us. She's doing her dissertation on it. Or we'll have the attorney that was representing Mark. Or we'll have the webmasters and the people that work with us. Oh, yeah, we're all in this together. And we all agree that Mark shouldn't be where he is. But in this case, uh, I'm just hoping you can see through the persecution of Mark Taylor that we are quite correct in what we're doing. And it's time to release the young man. Um, our hopes are that if we can get him released, maybe we can find help for him in New Zealand. So I would appreciate, you know, the, especially the beautiful people of New Zealand to kind of uh, cover him, at least in their prayers. Mm. Um, but he's definitely needing some help, and you'll see on his website what he was doing when they abducted and drugged him illegally. Now so, uh, yeah, it's it's not the kind of story that should be coming out of the United States of America, but he's being held a political prisoner, okay? Mm. Now, we've um, got a caller on the line here. She called in earlier, but didn't ta take her. Just then, Heather from Georgia, you're on the air. You know what? I was totally unprepared for you to pick up on the call right now. Um, I just started listening again, so I apologize. I'm kind of walking into the conversation line. Um, but I just wanted to just say a prayer for the um, mothers out in Connecticut and basically just say, you know, when, are, when is enough enough? They're, they're staging children's murder now to get a point across. Um, you, you know what I'm talking about, Vinny? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I've I've got this idea uh, right uh, how people shy away from this this type of subject in particular. Um whenever I've tried to 
uh, tell people about the huge amount of kids that go missing and and uh, the the setups and and uh, what happens particularly to children in, in in this world those are the things like i've lost relationships over that like those people never speak to me again because it's so traumatic to even entertain it for a second before shutting it down and then closing their eyes and then and then hoping it just doesn't happen to them and then letting it happen to everybody else instead well, enough is enough. I, you know what? It's not my child, but let me tell you something. On behalf of uh, every mother out there who, who knows how I feel, it, this is this is enough. You guys, let's stop it. This is I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know what to do anymore. But you know, to wake people up. But I'm just I'm sick of it. So I just kind of wanted to talk to somebody who who knew where I was coming from. Because in my real life, it's not like I can talk to anybody about this. I have to dial all the way across New Zealand to talk to you. So, anyway, I'll, I'll well, that, that, I'm sorry to interrupt. Heather, Heather, if I may, this is a really sad situation that the closest person you can talk to about about the scumbaggery that's happening to children is in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, it sucks, but... Um, so I, uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll let you go, Vinny. Um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt your guest. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye, buddy. All right, bye, Heather. Thank you very much for that. <sighs> Ron, do you laugh much? Not much these days. I, 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 I bet. Is there anything actually go that's on. that's been quite amusing in in any way, shape, or form? I know that would be kind of a weird question about these things that you've discovered. Anything actually ever make you laugh? You know what? I if I were to bury myself into this twenty four seven, I would probably be out of my mind. But no, I I carry on. I'm a businessman. I have a restaurant that I run. I've got a real life. Um, and in this case, uh, I'd really like to uh, disconnect from all of this. But I quite ob- obviously we have to get the truth out before I can ever go on turn a page. Um, and uh, you know, I've got. You know, I'm 63, so I'm looking towards retirement. I don't want to be doing this. I want to relax. So um, knowing that Mark is uh, being a political prisoner, I'm not standing for it, obviously, and uh, I'm doing everything I can to get every bit of truth out and hope that uh, w- you know the listening public understands that this isn't just about Mark. It's about all the fam- families that lost children at Columbine. Uh, uh, we have... Richard Castaldo right now, for instance, he was in the wheelchair in the Bowling for Columbine movie along with Mark. Um, and in this case, his, his house is being foreclosed on. Uh, here they've paralyzed him from the waist down. Now he's being thrown out of his house. Uh, so, you know, the, all the Columbine victims have a story. And mostly, mostly they're tragic, like Mark and Donna's. You have to realize they've been uh, persecuted. Uh, they've been on the run. Uh, you know, they've actually had to leave the state, and then they get captured in uh, Arizona. If you look at their whole story, that it's been a tragedy since the tragedy happened. And, uh, and then we've learned all the people that were manipulating Mark, um, Michael Moore being one of them, Ken Salazar being another, uh, and then all the uh, problems that he runs into when he works with a Dr. Tracy because he's exposing the psychotropic drugs as being dangerous. He spoke in front of the FDA twice. Uh, just take a moment to realize that this young man was a, a hero in our eyes when they took him, okay? Yeah, he was saying every, all the right things. He was wanting to be a preacher. He was looked like he was on the path to uh, being somebody, if you understand. And to see what they've done to him, realizing the tragedy that you can see for you, with your own two eyes of what they've done to that young man's life. Uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, uh, just in what they've done to him, that we must be carrying some that very powerful information for them to have taken their time to do such a horrible thing. Mm. And to this day, it's still being done because Donna would simply like to have her son released so she can go on, she, she and her son can go on with their life. And uh, they won't release him. Just say a prayer for him. I wish that she had been on the program tonight, but uh, I apologize for the uh, uh, fact we thought we were on for the 16th instead of the 14th. We apologize for that. 
No, it doesn't matter. Ron, if you'd like to say a prayer f- uh, for him on air um, right now, please do. All right. Dear Lord, we just ask that you have your will on this, dear Lord, and you preserve all the the, the lives that, that all these tragedies have uh, uh, brought horrific, terrible, terrible suffering to these families. And just as you suffer with us tonight in our knowledge of what just happened here in um, Connecticut, dear Lord, we just ask that, that this evil presence just be abolished from from the world and that we can just open our eyes, protect our children, and make sure that these uh, vile acts are uh, a thing of the past. And dear Lord, just let your truth come forward. And with your truth, and your your love and your concern, uh, all of these tragedies can, can at least uh, be dealt with in a timely manner and to where we can understand what needs to be done to stop them, dear Lord. I just ask Jesus' name, that you do this for us, that you come with your mighty power into this, dear Lord, and have your way. Amen. Amen, man. <sighs> you feel tired, man? You, uh... I just don't know where God is in this, to be quite honest with you. I'm just so, uh, uh, can I say, I, I'm feeling like it, it will take his presence I mean, that's that's what it will take. <laughs> but I have to say, the Christians are letting us down. Wake up, Christians. You know that it's not just an easy ride when you decide that you're going to do what God asks you to do. He wants, what do you think he, he has us Christian soldiers out there for? Why do you think he wants us to put on armor? There's a fight going on. Excuse me, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, on my soapbox. I'm angry, okay? Hey, being angry is um, what needs to be done, essentially. You know what anger is, mate? It's just depression that has motivation behind it. Well, you know, it comes with experience. Even my local church here, when I'm telling them how I learned that there was a, a sexual predator at the high school, I'm telling them that I you know, didn't have any money because I had to spend it all on lawyers to protect myself from false accusations and stuff. And Gee, I'd sure like to help. And then when I'm telling him of all the things that I've been trying to do in his community, where he's the shepherd, he walks away saying, well, good luck. So I'm like, get back here. What do you mean, good luck? This is your job, not mine. I'm not a school teacher. I'm not your priest. I'm nobody but a person who has decided that I'm going to get to the truth. And when the people in the community that stand up claiming that they're the shepherds don't stand when they don't stand up, it makes you real angry and it makes you want to depose that shepherd. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and, and welcome back to my very uh, special guest, Ron uh, Eigner. And uh, speaking of uh, being a businessman, when do you get any downtime, Ron? Because it seems like you're running a restaurant, you're running around, and uh, in, your, in your spare time, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, save people's kids. When do, you get any t- do you get any downtime? Do you get any you time? I'm not understanding you. Uh, can I give you what? Do you get any time to yourself to uh, <laughs> you know? Actually, uh, this takes up release. more time. Than, uh, it it kind of takes over even my own um, survival. Can I tell you that? I've got yeah. a lot of projects I can do uh, that I could produce a better income if I could only take time to do them. And with my back injury, I ain't looking towards doing them anytime soon anyway. But um, I have to spend my time getting this done. Uh, this is my uh, this is my uh, belief that uh, unless this is done, I haven't accomplished what I need to be doing. Okay, it, 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 the prioritizing I think is correct. Excuse me if I sound like I've gone off uh, uh, to where I've become what would you say uh, obsessed. Well, I guess my knowledge of this makes me want to be obsessed because I simply have knowledge here that when it gets out, it's going to shake up a few people, and I think the people need to be shaken up. So I'm hoping that people will understand this. Just go to Mark Taylor's website, and you'll see that he's not the only child that's involved. Um, We're fortunate enough to have taken on some uh, uh, strong support in the... uh, 
name of, um, if you know, Brandon Robb, who was a Marine, uh, recently who was abducted. And they tried to medicate him, but his mother, Kathleen Thomas, stood up for him. So in uh, trying to abduct a fellow Marine, we have a lot of good Marines that didn't think that was appropriate. And in that, uh, we have the support of P. Santilli. So I simply would like to kind of like plug P. Santilli for having stepped up for Mark Taylor. He sees the uh, uh, tragedy that's taking place. You don't have to... Uh, guess that is taking place, just simply see what they've done to Mark, and you'll understand that he is not only Donna's son, but he's an American son, and he was doing the right thing when they did this to him, and we can't let that happen to anyone, and in this case, it uh, apparently uh, exposes that they've been doing this uh, thousands of times over uh, to other people. And it's not the way our country should be run with them simply just grabbing people and throwing them into mental institutions and drugging them. So it opens up an entirely different uh, battle line, I guess, to where, you know, they're not just fighting it with guns, but they're fighting this with medications. And uh, obviously I think these medications that, uh, that they're prescribing are, in fact, causing uh, some of these uh, mass shootings that we're witnessing as we were talking about earlier, it takes away their uh, ability to have compassion. So I guess it I becomes also, a drug war. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I think they declared the drug war on the wrong side. They should have declared it on the pharmaceutical companies. They should have declared the drug war on the FDA. But instead... Uh -huh. <laughs> The people that, who make you know, lots of money off of dangerous drugs, right? Just, just on that simple fact that Mark spoke in front of the FDA against the drugs, he should qualify for some kind of a federal protection. You know what I'm saying? I just don't understand why, he, protection. why they threw him out with yesterday's trash because he was trying to expose these dangerous drugs. You'll see what I'm talking about when you go to the release Mark Taylor Facebook uh, and then, obviously, when we learned about the shooter uh, having been raped, good gosh, I mean, that's that's some bad information. People don't like you when they're military or where they're wearing uh, police uniforms or they swear their allegiance to the corruptness of the government. If they simply realize that they owe us, the taxpayer, uh, the respect of the Constitution, uh, then we would have our questions answered. But... For some reason, we can't get our government to uh, uh, give us those First Amendment rights that, uh, you know, obviously I'm talking freely now, but what I'm saying is we've been held off from the media stream uh, totally uh, with this information, and I don't think they should have that kind of power. Uh, it just goes to show you what the mainstream media is all about, because we've actually got several different tapes of uh, some of the mainstream pop popular media talking about what we've discussed tonight, and they've never done anything with it. You understand, they go so far, and then somebody shuts them up, or somebody loses a job, or something, and then it never goes any further. Hello? So, uh, yeah, you know Jonathan Elanoff, I believe. He's one of them. Um, Julia Hayden, who's in that one documentary, we have her questioning the uh, story when they... Uh, Pat Sullivan case came out. People were so shocked that that could actually happen, that cops could have sex with children. It takes a while for people to catch up with this, you know. Yeah, because uh, well, they, 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 they love we, the we cops. We gave another shot they're there at to, to protect them. the Columbine um, tragedy. Yes. Uh, well, well, we've got a, we've got a caller on the line here. I want to take him before we run out of time. 314 area code. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, um, hello, yeah, man. I was wondering, um, hello, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was wanting to comment on uh, what he was saying about the mainstream media. And they are absolutely all about keeping people, you know, absolutely distracted with things that really don't matter, like uh, like gay marriage and things like that, you know. Just keep the mind distracted. The three main things that go on in this country is <laughs> working, being entertained, and consuming. That's the three main functions. And no matter where you go, people are obsessed with that. And people say just they distract with that. 
Yeah, right. I, I completely agree. The distraction, essentially, I feel, is the main purpose of the mainstream media. Not to bring the important issues to your attention, but to distract you from them with unimportant things. Exactly. Well, remember they were talking about Marilyn Manson was supposed to be the reason why those two boys uh, went off. And in fact, I would like to tell Marilyn Manson, like, hey, guys, guess what? It wasn't you. It was a couple uh, pedophile cops, you know? Isn't that kind of mm-hmm. interesting that he should know that? Because he got attacked over uh, being an influence on the Columbine. There was really nothing to that, you understand? They were coming up with the Nazi connection, and no, they didn't even read any of Hitler's books. Those Are you talking about Charles Manson? No, Not, um, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Oh, Marilyn, Marilyn, okay. Let's... Yeah, he was in the Bowling for Columbine movie. You, you probably want to do a little uh, brushing up. There's a lot of this stuff that's on the Internet. You can uh, research it rather easily. Uh, there's one. Um, now, what we do know, too, is the guy that wrote the Columbine book... Uh, that's just simply named Columbine. Um, yeah, he um, uh, his name's David Cohen, and he's an FBI publicist. And he's also um, the one that did the um, uh, Columbine uh, final report, which is a video you can watch. Right towards the end of that, when they're asking why the two boys... Um, did this, they talk about that um, most interesting uh, written motive in the yearbook where it says, my wrath for January's incident will be godlike. Well, yeah, and then he goes on to, to settle it out as if he agrees now with the FBI's findings that these were two boys with uh, uh, minds that were, one was a psychopath and one was a depressive. Uh, you know, even, actually, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt but yes you know have you ever heard of the cia and its mind control programs in the what in its mind control programs the cia program. oh yeah uh-huh. okay, okay. yeah yeah they're really studying that heavily because of the theater shooter right now it's, yeah i know he had no i he had no recollection of what he was doing well and they're like using that. these events to uh you know strict up gun rights uh, a guy coming out of the prison that was interviewed by this uh, Pendergrass who we deal with uh, stated that uh, he was claiming that the therapist was a, uh, an evil woman who programmed him to do it. Okay, So that's already been, um, you know, everybody's talking MK Ultra, particularly about that case. But, you know, what you need to know is these two Columbine shooters had, had been, and we couldn't document, 15 contacts that the sheriff's officers had with those two boys. And you, if you know how it went, they denied that they even know who they were. And then we learned, obviously, that they knew who they were immediately. Remember, there was a three-and-a-half-hour time schedule. They had actually had the doors of the uh, control uh, van uh, locked because they were trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, it there. comes down to that uh, counter-personality concept that someone can just absolutely say something to you and trigger that personality. And the personality that you have goes away. And that, you know, you know, born ultimatum killer just comes right out of you. And you're trained and you know what to do. And then, you know, a few hours later, you're back to yourself and you're like, what the hell happened? Well, that sounds like... Yeah, what but I, I, I don't... Was were the Columbine, Columbine boys, like, were their parents in the CIA and they were actually in mind control programs, or is that just a theory? Well, you know, it depends on who you want to hear. Uh, I have heard, and there is a connection to the military, because Harris's father came out of Plattsville, with, and he was also working for a military contractor, uh, Jefferson, which means he might have been working CIA or something and got his check through another military contractor. Uh, strangely, the, the both parents have been very silent. And in this article I mentioned earlier, um, they were asking, gee, uh, we're hanging on every little uh, piece of information we can get from the shooter's mothers. Well... I forgot to mention that we have over 16,636 pages that we've got from uh, 
attorney John DeCamp's office because they raided his office for him and they didn't get it all. And out of that, out of those pages, we've found a number of pages that were under seal, including some of the depositions of the <laughs> shooter's parents. So here... The Ron, media here I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ron, the, uh, the show's over. Thank you very much. ColumbineFamilyRequest.org No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments, and suggestions of guests. Vinny is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the vinnieeastwoodshow.com and click donate. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Do you realise every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the VinnieEastwoodShow.com I'm still not understanding. Was was there a was there can, can, was there a gun ban? You know, were they banning guns on school grounds? Uh, all of the schools have um, no gun policies. They're it's a joke. They put up a sign uh, saying this is a gun free zone, and in fact, uh, if you're carrying a a weapon is that you you might should sign down but it's not going to stop you uh and i'm afraid that the uh, gunmen will go to gun free zones i think that was a, the plan of the columbine shooters to go to a place where no one else has a gun so uh, yeah we noticed that pattern throughout and uh interestingly they have made columbine one of those battlegrounds for gun rights uh you remember the movie bowling for columbine Mark yeah. Taylor was in that movie, uh, the, the young man that's been abducted and drugged. He, he's been in that movie, uh, and he was quite uh, strong about um, having our Second Amendment rights. And in this case, uh, Michael Moore twisted it around to make it look like he was uh, wanting to uh, ban guns. and So it's amazing how they twisted it all around. Well, um, it's not the guns that are killing people, it's the people behind the guns. And I'm afraid what we're noticing here is what Mark was pri trying to bring to our attention. I believe most of them are being affected with uh, prescription drugs. Mm. So I think it's, we should concern ourselves with the uh, suicidal tendencies that um, Mark was talking about when he sued the Solvay Pharmaceutical Company. Mm. There's a lot of different um, side effects that are also, you know, homicidal, suicidal tendencies. Essentially, you, you kind of lose total 
touch with reality you, you kind of feel like what you're looking at and what you're doing isn't real anymore and yeah, it's horrible they, things they ensue yeah yeah well there was they a passion for other people either you know yeah it, it just shuts down that part of the brain it's like an empathy uptake inhibitor right that's it so uh in a nutshell we've learned that all these people that are uh, investigating school shootings will only go so far. And until they investigate the rape of the shooters at Columbine and the facts that the two boys... Now, see, they had learned how to handle, how to play with their drugs. They're smart boys. And they learned that the um, uh, that if you take a lot of them all at once and then you come off of them, that it would create a lot of rage. And they actually used that as a weapon. So Mark Taylor was saying that uh, these drugs should be considered uh, uh, accessory to murder. They practically they they're practically Idiot. loaded weapons. Yeah, it makes sense. And even in the theater shooting, uh, the only lawsuit that's come forward so far has been against the theater itself, apparently for not keeping the security. Um, we know that the uh, shooter must have been on these same psychotropic drugs because the... Uh, psychiatrist that was treating him had already been in trouble in um, Texas for having um, prescribed these drugs to herself and to family members. So she was a proponent of these drugs. So I'm, we're, we're believing, even though we don't have it out yet, that he was uh, being affected by the same drugs or the same family of drugs that uh, the shooter that shot uh, Mark was on. And in fact, now the, the drugs that Mark is on that is such a horrible story in itself to see this poor family. All Donna Taylor did was bring her uh, son to school one day. He was one of the first ones shot. And immediately they tried to uh, silence him. He had witnessed, um, while he was laying in the grass bleeding to death, uh, fortunately they got him just before he died, uh, he noticed that there was a shooter on the roof. And... Um, the authorities came in, and the name of uh, Chief Investigator Gary Kleinman threatened Mark that if he said anything, uh, that there'd be people uh, that he should fear. And, in fact, uh, he didn't put any of that in Mark's report. Later on, we found helicopter footage where we found the SWAT team on the roof. And they've never explained why this SWAT team was up there that was never identified or never acknowledged. Hey, Ron. Yes. Well, this is really interesting, and I want to talk more about this after after the break as well. Why would a SWAT team already be there on the roof? Isn't it? Isn't that interesting? Well, and, and and even if they were on the roof, why weren't they saving people? Why weren't they going in with this with their SWAT business and and and, and taking out the shooters? Let's find out. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on American Freedom Radio. My very special guest, Ron Agner. And we also have the columbinefamilyrequest.org. That's columbinefamilyrequest.org. Ron, welcome back. Thank you. Now, we were talking about the SWAT teams on the roof. And we become familiar with things like uh, inside jobs, false flags and the various legislations that come out after various events to take people's guns, surveil them, put uh, expensive uh, scanning equipment in schools, treat the children like slaves, things like that. Is any of that ringing a bell in regards to Columbine for you? All, all of the above. Uh, they use that as the calling card for all of this, particularly the bullying uh, issue. Now we have a, um, a story as to how this was spun. If you like to hear about COINTELPRO and spin doctors and such, uh, go to a website called Hugging the Spotlight by Jessica Siegel and read, uh, it's down about halfway where it says Media City, and you'll see how they spun the story about being uh, like a gang story between two uh, factions, the Trenchcoat Mafia and the Jocks. And you'll learn that Michael Smith didn't even go to Columbine High School, but yet they they ran with that story. You understand? 
Yes. Uh, and this is all still up on the Internet. So most of this stuff, uh, you know, like I'm explaining here, this, these articles were written like 13 years ago. So uh, go back to that article and read where Michael Smith spun the story to make it sound like this was an internal Columbine school tragedy. But they would never left that story outside the schoolyard, even though uh, one of the shooters had a bumper sticker on his car that says, I hate this town. So, if, you know, that one bumper sticker uh, indicates there was something serious. Now, let me explain to you to court against the pharmaceutical companies. And as a result, they have abducted Mark illegally. They just framed him and took him away and put him on the same psychotropic drugs that he was uh, going around saying that were um, quite dangerous. And another thing we learned about our investigation is why the shooter that shot Mark was on psychotropic drugs. And this um, prevented Mark from getting any protection uh, from law enforcement because this points the finger back at law enforcement when we learned that the shooter that shot Mark had been raped during an arrest. And now we have Dr. or excuse me, attorney, well, he is a doctor of law, uh, attorney John DeCamp um, openly stating that uh, the uh, shooters were raped multiple times. So here we have two boys that were victimized through pedophilia and they put uh, drugs in them to try to control them. Now, what concerned us was the fact that they had an opportunity to stop Columbine when they had prepared a search warrant for one of the shooter's house, for Eric Harris's house, and they didn't act on the search warrant. We found that when the boys had been raped, they were in the process of covering up the pedophilia and were afraid that the truth would come out in a courtroom as to why these boys were building bombs. So you understand it's quite deep as far as their responsibility in not stopping Columbine because they uh, failed in their um, responsibility by trying to protect a pedophile police officer. And then since then, we've got the long, long story of trying to bring this forward to all of our people that we would consider responsible people in the position of trust. And, uh, well, for instance, we wouldn't be on your show talking from New Zealand tonight if these um, uh, people that were in the position of trust uh, were doing their job. In other words, they would have investigated the rape of the shooters. And our um, investigation is quite intensive. It uh, involves a forensic psychologist that has researched this, and we have a number, hundreds of people who have researched this. We've got over a million hits on our YouTubes, for instance. So if, if you have a moment, uh, grab a pencil, and I'll give you uh, two websites that you can go to and see some of our investigation and then what has happened to Mark Taylor because of his outspokenness. Um, you can go to Release Mark Taylor. Just Google that and go to his Facebook page. There's another number of articles that come up. And you can also go to Columbine Family Request. Now, the Columbine Family Request article has an interesting uh, side story or rabbit hole or whatever where we go to a sheriff, Pat Sullivan, with our information, hoping that he'll investigate it, and then later find out that Sheriff Pat Sullivan is arrested for trading methamphetamines with homosexual prostitutes, and he admits to having sex with underage children. So this is the kind of law enforcement we're up against. Um, it goes on to another school shooting, the Platte Canyon tragedy, in which we learned that the school resource officer was getting girls pregnant. And most interestingly, this um, school resource officer, his name is Jeff Wood, ends up in the... Um Oi! G'day, everybody! Welcome to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. I happen to be sitting right here in the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island change nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. It's freaking gorgeous down here, and it glows with a radiance, almost uh, reminiscent of Fukushima, and everybody's managed to p snap up a part-time job as an incandescent light bulb to help the economy. Today, on the line here, 
I believe we have a man named uh, Roy Agner, and we're going to be talking about the Columbine Massacre. And I don't know if anybody else has heard this, but apparently in Connecticut, there's a town that's been rocked by a mass shooting at an elementary school, and this has uh, come out in, uh, in, in Reuters here. Okie dokie. This is apparently one of the biggest uh, uh, killings that I've ever made. So I think it's very synchronistic that at this particular point in time, we happen to have somebody talking about the Columbine Massacre. Unless I'm mistaken, Roy would be on the line there. Roy, Hello, uh, my name's Ron. Ron! Sorry. Yes. Oh, we just kind of pulled uh, this together in, yes, a, in about 60 seconds. I'm calling from the Columbine area, and uh, I'm, I'm still in shock from this latest tragedy, but as we all should understand, this tragedy indicates that... Uh, we're not done with this topic, and um, what I hope to share with you today is that we can't trust the people that are dealing with this topic. Um, in our Columbine investigation, we've learned that uh, they don't want to uh, discuss the truth that we've, we've unearthed. Um, I work with um, Donna Taylor, who I was hoping to have on the program today, but um, I guess I'll wing it on my own. We but, have uh, somebody uh, call. We have somebody on the caller line here in a uh, in a two one two area code. Is that you, Donna? Oh, maybe that's. Um, we have another lady that's uh, working hard uh, on Donna's behalf. Um, Kathleen Thomas. That could be her. Uh, well, I don't know. It's a, it's a, in a two one two area code. Caller, you're on the air. Apparently, nobody there. Never mind. Oh. Looks like you are on your own. Well, actually, you're not. You're with me. I am having a little difficulty with you as far as volume, but uh, I'll try to... uh, Would you repeat that and then uh, say just a wee bit louder and I can hear you better? Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can normally hear you. You have a very distinctive voice. I've been to your country. I just love you people there. Uh, uh, Hopefully, maybe we can actually uh, go there and do uh, the filming that we plan to do about the tragedy of Mark Taylor, but let me get on with it. Mark Taylor, uh, who got shot, he was the first one to get shot at Columbine, uh, ended up getting uh, persecuted over his whistleblowing. And what he was doing is it was uh, revealing the truth. Uh, Number one, the the shooter at Columbine was uh, uh, on psychotropic drugs, and at the time of Columbine, it wasn't well known that these drugs call suicidal tendencies. And so he and um, uh, John DeCamp, an attorney who's quite famous for writing the book, The Franklin Cover-Up, uh, went uh, as a, a winner of a National School Safety Award. So if you're interested, you can simply Google Jeff Wood, Park County. I think it's the second article that down that will uh, show you that Jeff Wood was, in fact, uh, honored with this award, even though he wasn't at the uh, campus of Platte Canyon to protect the children, and one girl got shot, and several girls got raped. So um, I'm trying to give you as much information as I can to make you realize that we've also not only uncovered the cause of the Columbine tragedy, but we've also uh, unfortunately learned that there's many, many, many people that will uh, stand uh, for protection of pedophile rapists instead of looking at uh, the rape of a child. Uh, It's a defensive mechanism our government has put in position to protect itself. Oh, we've we've, uh, gone into that a lot on the show. Um, There's human trafficking and um, CPS, child prostitution rings that are protected by judges and chiefs of police and things like that. They get delivered to the White House. Uh, it, it, it's it's rampant. Well, that's the uh, Franklin cover-up, the uh, White House connection when they were bringing call boys to the White House during the Papa Bush administration. And John DeCamp, uh, can I say, he he's an honorable man. He was one of the eight outstanding uh, veterans from the Vietnam War. He was honored. Um, he saved thousands of uh, uh, Vietnam orphans, uh, Operation Baby Lift, and he was like a four-term senator with uh, Nebraska. And as I say, he uh, well, he was fortunate enough to go into some secret files 
they had sealed files from the from the families so that we never could go into these files. And they included what they called the basement tapes. Now, these were tapes that the shooters made, and they've been sealed. And also the depositions of the shooter's parents have been sealed. And he said that his opportunity to go into those files and sealed records, um, uh, he learned through that that he... Uh, um, that, that the shooter, Harris, had been uh, raped multiple times. Now, our investigation didn't uh, allow us to go into those files, but we found from close, uh, there's close to 50,000 pages that have been released. Columbine was the largest investigation in the history of the state of Colorado. And uh, we learned just through the released files that the boys were raped on a particular date. Uh, it was what the boys called the January incident. So if you were to Google January incident, then that would uh, allow you to start understanding how serious this, this arrest was. It's the first thing that'll come up when you when you Google January incident. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we've, we've got the information out there, but uh, mainstream media refuses to deal with the truth. And now we have uh, the theater shooting here in Colorado, uh, and then uh, tragically we have this. Uh, Horrible situation in Connecticut. You and know what I think. Getting, I think what all these things sure. have got in common is that these shootings. Did, was Columbine High School by chance a gun a gun ban zone as well? Yeah, was it was. Was it a gun ban zone? 